Hey everybody, Brett from Stardust Gaming here, back with another Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord dev blog, and the first one of 2018. So we're getting back into the swing of things, and they're starting things off this year with the uh, Asurai Faction Spotlight. So uh, for those of you not familiar with the new factions Bannerlord, these guys are sort of the Serenade equivalent, and supposedly, uh, well I guess we'll find out, but um, it was my understanding that there's some sort of precursor to them. So let's dive on in. Greetings, warriors of Kalradia. To the south of the Imperial Heartland lies Nahasa, the Bronze Desert, uh, ringed by mountains, hammered by the sun. A traveler coming over the passes from greener lands would first see fields of dunes broken by gravel plains and volcanic outcrops, shimmering under the heat haze. But there is water to be found underground, trapped in depressions or beneath the Wadis, where the occasional flash flood rumbles by. And in these oases... Uh, people have settled. There are divided. They are divided into dozens of clans and subclans, each with its elaborate genealogy, but are collectively known as the Banu Asura, Asara, Asura, or the Asurai, uh, after the legendary patriarch Asura, who they all claim as an ancestor. Uh, the empire, even at its heights, preferred not to send its legions into the army-devouring wastes. Instead, it projected its power into the Nahasa by cultivating clients and allies among the clans, who competed in an endless dance of power. Those clans that could secure a hold on the oases won an imperial subsidy to protect passing caravans and grew rich. Uh, those who could not were pushed into the desert, left to raise goats and camels and raid caravans until they could plot a comeback. Today, the waning of the Empire offers new opportunities and new risks. The Asurai have agreed to form a confederacy under a sultan chosen from uh, the richest of the clans, the Banu Holian. But everyone knows that the dance has only temporarily been stopped and that the right moment will begin again. Alright, so the Asurai are based on the Arab tribes just before the great Islamic conquest of the 7th century, uh, which... You know, it's, it's real interesting the time periods they're going for here because these guys apparently are taking their inspiration from the 7th century, which is several centuries earlier than many of the other factions. So that, that's a bit odd. It's sort of like Warband where you have a bunch of like um, factions based on various, you know, countries in the Middle Ages. And then you have, like, the the Dark Age era Nords, which it just kind of, like, you know, why? Uh, but a, a lot of people mention that when they talk about the Warband factions, is that you have, like, one, uh, one faction in the Nords that's, like, technologically inferior to all the others, but still is kind of balanced normally otherwise. Uh, and it, it's just kind of odd. And this kind of strikes me the same way. I imagine they'll be balanced just fine in the game, but to be pulling inspiration from, like, three or four hundred years earlier than every other faction. I'm just kind of left wondering why. Uh, anyways, so uh, Conquest of the 7th Century, which created a diverse tri-continental caliphate whose scale and institutions don't really fit Bannerlord's political system. In the centuries before, the Arabs formed a series of confederations. Uh, actually, one second there. I think they... Okay, so... The reason they didn't draw from a later period is because of the caliphates, uh, which would probably... I'm struggling to think of how to explain this. Um, it, it would sort of disagree with the lore that they're trying to establish, because the Empire is supposed to be like the main... The, kind of the star of the show here, and these guys are just a, a small you know, faction outside of that. And so I think the reason they went earlier was so that they could pull from a more, like... Well, they weren't nomads. They were they were set up in the oases. But, uh, a, a, you know, a smaller type of faction like that rather than the giant caliphates. So I, I guess that sort of makes sense. But then, like, again, technical, technologically, they're going to be a bit dated, which, oh well, I guess. Um, anyways, the Arabs formed a series of confederations and kingdoms inside and on the margins of the Arabian and Syrian deserts. Many think of the entire Middle East as arid wastes, even though most of the more famous battles, especially during the Crusades, were fought in coastal Mediterranean regions or the highland steppe of Anatolia. 
The Arab heartland, however, uh, really is mostly desert. Our landscapes reflect the harsh beauty of dunes, craggy mountains, and oases, along with the less glamorous stretches of wasteland in between, like scrubland and dry wadis. I don't know what that, that word is. Uh, historians have left vivid portraits of the chieftains, kings, and occasional ruling queens of Palmyra, Kinda, Hira, and other principalities of the deserts. Some were morally complex characters managing their domains with a mixture of cajoling, threats, bribes, skullduggery, bravery, and shameless nepotism. Uh, the Asarai Sultan, Un Unkid, is cut from this mold. Uh, their task was not made easier by warrior poets like Imru al Kais. I, I don't know how to pronounce like Arabic cues because in English it's always Q U and it makes a specific sound, but I assume they're probably using it differently, so maybe like a, a K sound, like a K or a, a hard C. I, I don't know. Uh, anyways, Antara and Tarafa. These untamable mavericks wrote lyric verse uh, about the transition, transitory nature of human experience. Their memories of liaisons with their beloved in a now deserted campsite, slowly erased by wind and food, then used it to segue into a string of boasts about the battles they've won and the seeds they've ridden. We're using Bannerlord's new events system to create a backstory of grudges and feuds that will test an aspiring sultan's ability to placate and lead. And here we see some of the uh, just like common people walking around in a in, in an an Asarai uh, town, and we get to see uh, some pretty interesting architecture here. Probably the furthest departure from anything else we've seen. Obviously, this is uh, you know very distinct from the sort of like early uh, medieval European stuff that we see throughout most of the other factions. And then we get um, some more distinct styles of dress, at least with what this woman's wing wearing wearing here. Um, this is, you know, fairly common, like robe style stuff that we see pretty often, but with a, you know, more Eastern flair to it. So, uh, let's see. Mid-Eastern armies are popular, popularly associated with horse archers, but in fact, those only became prevalent about two centuries after the founding of Islam with the influx of Turks. Uh, the Arabs fought with short sword, long spear, and foot bow. Warriors prided themselves on their flexibility, fighting as light-mounted lancers or heavy foot, in formed ranks or as uh, individual champions. Javelins are favorite. Javelins, a favorite weapon of the Berbers, uh, made their appearance in Islamic armies fairly early, and we have the Asarai use them as well. So it sounds like they're very, very similar to the Serenades um, in terms of fighting style and everything else, because the Serenades uh, weren't particularly cavalry heavy. They did have some good cavalry, but they weren't um, all cav cavalry like, you know, the Kirgi or whatever. So it, it seems that the Asurai are basically going to be the same in terms of gameplay. Uh, so, all in all, it's a mix of good troops, pretty well balanced across cavalry and infantry. The Arabs were famously proud of their horses, and the Asarai breeds, uh, produced by pastures in Asarai lands, will have unique characteristics. Uh, Middle Eastern warriors wore a mix of armors, often under richly embroidered textiles. Bannerlord's physics model gives us new options in bringing the pageantry of these armies to life, with banners, horse tails, and robes fluttering in the desert breeze. The Asarai, like all Bannerlord cultures, will have minor factions. The Jawal are Bedouin nomads, like those who plagued caliphs, sultans, and kings through Islamic history. And though our reference point is late antiquity and the very early medieval era, we've also introduced some institutions that thrived under the caliphs. So they're, they're pulling from a, a broader point in history. Because uh, it seems like they want to pull from later, but because of the uh, culture in those lands or the the structure of culture in those lands, uh, they couldn't pull entirely from it. So the Gilman, uh, a brotherhood of slave warriors, represent the forerunners to the Mamluks who fought for and later came to dominate the caliphate. Asarai towns, meanwhile, will be dominated by the back alley mafias who feature in tales of urban Middle Eastern life from the Thousand and One Nights, uh, the Arabian Nights, to the novels of uh, Naguib Mahfouz, 
The desert of the south will be hard to rule and dangerous to traverse, but the other realms ignore it at their peril, lest it suddenly throw forth a host capable of bringing empires to their knees. And here we get some cool concept art. Uh, in next week's blog, we will be speaking with writer and designer Steve Negus. If you have any questions you would like to ask him, please leave a reply in the comment section, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, it, it sounds like they're very similar to the Serenades. I think in terms of uh, factions translating from Warband to Bannerlord, this one is probably the most just like uh, straight transition. There's really nothing new happening here. Um, other than they're kind of, you know, taking it back a few hundred years just to uh, match everything else in Bannerlord. But yeah, I don't think we're going to see much, if anything, change here, really. They even have, a, you know, a look that's pretty consistent with the Serenids. So nothing much is changing. But I mean, I don't, I don't know much about that particular area in terms of history. Um, most of my historical background is very like Western European, mostly Western European, uh, because I'm American and that's, you know, what gets taught the most in our schools. And uh, so I pick up an interest on that and I study it more myself, but uh, I don't have the same sort of uh, uh, inspiration thrown at me with the Eastern stuff. Not that I don't think it's interesting, it's just that with the Western stuff, I kind of know what to look for and I can learn more about it. Whereas uh, with the Eastern stuff, you know, I kind of have to start from scratch and that's harder to do. But anyways, um, I guess we'll leave it here and uh, we'll pick back up next week with the Q&A with that writer guy, writer and designer. Um, I, I'm hoping for more information about the actual game and less with these Q&As. We've heard rumors swirling that there might be something happening uh, in like spring of 2018 with the game, but again, they're just rumors, so I don't know how valid they are. But... Uh, I just, you know, I don't want to hear any more about what writers do on their daily grind or whatever. I want to learn more about the actual features of the game. That's not something we particularly get a lot of in those Q&As. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time talking about some Bannerlord with you, as I always do. And I look forward to seeing you guys back here next week for the next one. <laughs>